Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Romano here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 7th, 2020, recorded on 8.42 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at Hurricane Delta, maximum sustained winds have come down from the previous time we talked. However, uh, they were slightly rebounded as of the 8 o'clock intermittent advisory. You can see uh, we have a very different picture now than what we had uh, roughly about 12 hours ago, the storm, as you might remember from talking uh, earlier this afternoon, the storm came across the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, last night and into today, now has moved generally towards the west and then making that bend back towards the northwest now. We've seen much of a track like this, and again, the storm is putting off a very nice show of convection tonight. Um, but we do have a lot of structural changes that have occurred, and you can kind of see that here. We have a pretty large, uh, pretty large curving band towards the north that's kind of wrapping in. This will kind of wrap in with time. It will take several hours to do so, but this will uh, eventually kind of rotate around. And we also see a very healthy central dense overcast with deep convection, uh, with thunderstorms, you know, cloud tops upwards of about 85, minus 85 to minus 90 degrees Celsius. So this means that it is literally off the charts here. And again, it's, it's trying to form that inner core structure that we lost because of shear and the landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula uh, yesterday. So given all of these factors, we've started to see that inner core rebound. And we can see from the Hurricane Center, uh, or the, the recon plane rather, that we now have some pretty strong winds on the northeast quadrant. And uh, this is very important because we note that from earlier this afternoon, the maximum flight level winds on this side were only about 70 knots. Uh, so they were on the order of about, you know, 80 to, you know, let's just say 85 miles per hour. Now we've seen an increase to about 85 knots of flight level wind on the northeast side and pressures down to about 974 millibars. And that's very important because that kind of goes to show that we do have uh, kind of the inner core, the eye wall starting to rebuild. And if we actually look at the NOAA plane, or if we look at the, the, the plane from earlier this afternoon, rather, this is the Air Force plane from earlier this afternoon, you can see pressures coming off the Yucatan were in the high 970s to low 980s. So, and we can also see that we did not have a well-defined inner core structure and no hurricane force flight level winds on the south side and barely about 70 knots of, of winds there on the northeast quadrant. Now, if we go back even to the recon plane from the NOAA plane that's in there right now, we can see even on the north and south side, we have a very well-defined uh, sharp gradient here between the hurricane force winds, the calm center here, and then once again back out into the Iowa with hurricane force flight level winds. And uh, we can also see that we also have a pretty good maximum here of about 90 knots flight level and about 70 knots of uh, surface wind there, which puts us upwards of about 85, 90 miles per hour. And the plane uh, from earlier, once again, the uh, Air Force reconnaissance plane found much of the same with about 95 knots there uh, of about flight level wind. So this is now starting to rebuild a lot of the inner core and we, we know that it still has a little while to go but it does have an open eye wall it's open on the northeast side and we can clearly see that we don't have this convection rotating all the way around and, and kind of creating a rotating uh, you know convective burst but uh, you know these have stalled out and that might be in part that meaning that we still have maybe some shear coming out of the storm uh, but by and large, it's nothing that significant, and uh, this is going to be well on its way to organizing and intensifying quickly as it moves generally west-northwestward over the next couple of days or so. Now, after that point in time, though, things become a little bit more tricky in terms of intensity uh, and eventual track. Now, we can see from today... We still have hurricane warnings for the Yucatan Peninsula, but those will probably be dropped later today or later at the 11 o'clock advisory. Now, the storm is still small, but it's much larger than it was uh, per se yesterday before it made landfall. And that's going to mean that it's going to take a little bit more time for it to uh, rapidly intensify in the Gulf. Uh, and for that reason, the intensity measurements and estimates have been knocked down to only about 115 
and kind of moving into here into Louisiana as probably a strong Category 2 hurricane. Now, there is hurricane uh, watches up in effect from near the eastern port of Louisiana or the eastern part of Texas uh, through about Port Arthur and then all the way down through central west, er, western and then central Louisiana with tropical storm watches going and covering near Lake Pontchartrain, tropical storm watches for the Bolivar Peninsula, uh, down through Sabine uh, Pass, etc., all the way down to just south of Houston. So there is a chance that this does come in, again, if it does not make this turn as expected, it could come in a little bit further towards the right, and that's why there's still the outside possibility this could make landfall somewhere in the far western part of Louisiana or far eastern Texas, or make landfall here uh, near Vermilion Bay. So there's kind of an area here, but we're starting to narrow down to, to near the Lake Charles uh, general vicinity. So uh, again, this is going to be something that we have to watch over the next several days to see how this actually progresses. And it does seem like we unfortunately are going to have another uh, potentially life-threatening situation setting up for uh, portions of Louisiana. So it's imperative that if you're told to evacuate, you need to evacuate now and take uh, necessary precautions to mitigate uh, you know, life uh, and property damage as well. So it's something to be mindful of, and especially with the storm surge values, uh, Vermilion Bay, you know, even all the way through Galveston, uh, Galveston Bay, Sabine Pass, uh, Vermilion Bay, you know, Lake Pontchartrain, even Lake Bourne, all the way through Ocean Springs, Mississippi, even uh, as far west as Port O'Connor and High Island, Texas, there is the very real possibility that storm surge is going to be a deadly threat. And conceiving for here, Vermilion Bay, 7 to 11 feet of storm surge through Pelican Island, all the way out through and just east of the landfall point. And that's because, again, now that the storm is much larger, it, it's now going to cause a lot more surge. That energy down there in the ocean, even as the storm weakens, is still going to be there. So it's going to push all the storm surge up. And as it turns almost due north, that's going to shove that storm surge on the right front quadrant of the storm. So it's going to be important where this makes landfall, and, but you, and you can even clearly see that Cameron, Louisiana, where it took the ground zero impact from Hurricane Laura, you know, only a couple of short months ago, has another potential to be in a dangerous, life-threatening situation. So, you know, this isn't something to take lightly. And even all the way down through Mobile Bay in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, you could see storm surge two to four feet well to the east of the landfall point, but that's because of the shape here, the the geography and topography of the you know land here and the, the way the land mass is shaped. This is a very real concern, and it has to be taken very seriously that this is going to cause some pretty significant damage, even if that wind threat isn't necessarily at 120, 130 miles per hour. You don't need that to cause significant damage, so it's imperative to understand, don't necessarily get caught up in that, you know, category. Make sure that you're also preparing for the storm surge, freshwater rainfall aspect, and the potential for tornadoes in that right front quadrant. Now, if you look here at the H wharf, this is the 12Z model run here, and this is depicting the 200 millibar winds in the atmosphere. We can clearly see, we'll, we'll kind of move this out here to uh, about 0Z, uh, Thursday, so this is about 8 o'clock uh, as of about 50 minutes ago. Uh, again, what's leading to the intensification now is we have a general light flow you can see in the h wharf model here. It's depicting nearly an anticyclonic flow across most of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, but you can also see that some of the inhibitors here, we have a lot of shear uh, awaiting where the storm is going to be traveling. You can clearly see that shear uh, is coming up in that area. And this is running at about 25 to 30 knots of shear right now. So this is still a lot of shear that's ahead of the storm. But right now we don't have a lot, you know, maybe about 5 to 10 knots. So that's probably what is right now prohibiting those convective bursts from fully rotating around. Uh, and that the storm just isn't necessarily mature enough yet to actually rotate those all the way around. But you will start to see that as the storm intensifies into the Gulf of Mexico. Now... Again, you can very clearly see this anticyclonic flow across the Gulf that's leading to a general 
um, you know, outflow pattern being established with Delta. Now, as this moves forward here, we'll start to see what's going to change as we have this big trough that's digging down across uh, the southwest United States right now. And this trough ahead of it in this jet streak region is producing an area of shear out of the southwesterly direction. So that's going to come over top of the storm. And also what we have usually behind these uh, troughs is an area of very dry, stable air. And that is going to, pro you know, really prohibit uh, much of the intensification all the way up until landfall. So this is going to start to weaken the storm. Now, the other thing that's going to weaken the storm here, if we actually look the h -warps depiction of the sea surface temperatures, and we talked about this earlier, how these were going to play a pretty big role in actually, to, you know, understanding what's going to happen with this. And again, what we talked about, we'll, we'll move this out here to zero Z. Uh, but what we talked about is notice that all of these, you know, water temperatures out here are not very warm. And that's because we had a pretty sharp a cold front come through across the southeast United States and into the Gulf and those you know shallow you know shallower waters have basically been eroded and depleted of the warm water so what you see is a pretty sharp drop off from about 28 29 Celsius all the way down to about 26 25 Celsius near the Louisiana coastline now the storm is ultimately moving up in that general direction. Now, it's possible that over the next couple of days, this might have a chance to warm a little bit more. But we're talking that by Friday, this is going to be making landfall. So by, uh, you know, within a couple of hours, we'll be able to say, you know, tomorrow uh, being Friday. So this is going to have a very real threat. It's not just going to be lingering over the Gulf and have a chance to explode. And that's one of the things that's probably keeping the intensity down quite a bit here is the fact that this is going to be moving very quickly tonight and in through tomorrow. And we can clearly see now this makes landfall probably on Friday afternoon. So by Friday afternoon, this will probably be making landfall. But what's very important to see here is as the storm kind of goes up, it turns up all of this warm water here. And notice what I want you to pay attention to is this area right in here, how as the tropical storm, you know, as the, the hurricane goes over that area, these waters deplete very quickly. And that's because they're shallow. So any storm that moves in that area, we saw it with Hurricane Paulette uh, when it impacted Bermuda, the, or Hurricane Teddy, rather, when it impacted near Bermuda, that um, it, it just started to go undergo with collapse because those shallower, cooler waters. So that's very important to understand that this will have a very real impact on the intensity of the storm and it will likely weaken it right before landfall. But how much remains to be the biggest question and I think we're going to know a lot more answers uh, by tomorrow morning. So that's going to be one of the important things. Tomorrow morning I feel like we'll have a better understanding of what this is going to do uh, once it reaches the coastline and where exactly this is going to be. So we have a lot to, to kind of decipher tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, but we're starting to get more answers in terms of what's going to happen. Uh, of course, you know, earlier, you know, yesterday we had no idea what, what necessarily is going to happen in the Gulf. Now we have a much better understanding now that it is enter the Gulf and starting to intensify once again. So, uh, again, be mindful of the storm surge uh, problem besides the wind and freshwater rainfall flooding issues and tornadoes on the right front quadrant to the east of the landfall point is generally where conditions are going to be the worst. And that stays true for the storm surge again, Vermilion Bay uh, through uh, Lake Pontchartrain and uh, Cameron and um, Pelican Island uh, could see the worst of the conditions with 7 to 11 feet of storm surge expected for portions near Vermilion Bay. So very important to understand that. Uh, again, don't focus necessarily on the wind category. Focus on all of the impacts, uh, including storm surge, rainfall, tornadoes, and wind. So make sure you kind of take that again. Take the precautions to mitigate life and property damage. And uh, with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow morning.